Molo Sanbonani, hello, how's it? Shalom, good evening. And uh, welcome now, welcome to the Big Daddy Liberty Show. This is your Wednesday night, 7 p.m. midweek show with me, Usishle Ngobese, Big Daddy Liberty. Welcome to it. Um, I've got a few gremlins tonight, so bear with me, good people. Um, I just want to make sure my sound levels are good. I'm sure that'll trickle in in the comment section. Just as I'm waffling away doing my pre-show stuff, um, age, name, and city that you're on. Let's see you guys in the comment sections tonight, because tonight really is a show that will involve you, the viewer, on the show. I'm going to trial, that is, to try a new format um, that brings you onto the show. This is something we might even do once a week on various topics um, that we often traverse here on the Big Daddy Liberty Show. But as always, a reminder to you, hit that like button. You know, if you're just joining us on the show, if you're new to the show, do me a big favor, guys. Hit that like button right now. And um, <laughs> it sure is how we'll get the show going. Um, and actually, not even going, sorry, that's a, that's a usual refrain of mine. What it actually does is it helps get the show out to a wider audience because the uh, algorithm, as they often say, uh, probably tracks what you like and what the people who follow you like and shares the show to those people. So hit that like, pe like button, people. Let's keep the likes above 50% of the number of people watching, that 50% engagement. Um, so hit that like, people, as I see you guys trickling in. Welcome to it. My name is Cynthia Ngobese, as I said. This is the Big Daddy Liberty Show. Um, guys, we are going to have a different show tonight. You will be physically a part of it. I did mention, if you perhaps were brought here by some of the ads I put out, um, that you'll have an opportunity to come live on the show. In fact, with that being said, let me just put the link out. Um, so just keep an eye on the chat section and I'll put the link out. Uh, just two rules, guys, two rules. Number one, um, you've got to cam up. Um, you've got to actually be on camera, have the light in front of you so we can see your face. And um, yeah, just uh, you've got to cam up. That's my first rule, non-negotiable. The second rule is, you cannot talk over me, guys. You cannot over talk me. Um, I'm trying to run a show. Please respect this platform. If you want to have your own platform, by all means, do that. But uh, let's actually have a conversation, a dialogue, uh, one which I will guide. So those are my only two rules, guys. Uh, you've got to cam up. You've got to be on camera. Have a light in front of you so you can see your face. And of course, you cannot talk over me. You cannot over talk me. Let's have a conversation. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to open the lines and um, give me a moment first. I did say this, uh, we're, we're building it, um, we're, we're flying it as we build it. <laughs> so just give me a second, folks. Let me just put the link up. Uh, just keep an eye on the comment section, whether you're watching on Facebook, Twitter, or on YouTube. Uh, just quickly copy that. And I'm gonna quickly put this on here. Uh, otherwise, again, guys, I'm keeping it on the, the comment section, um, you know, age, city, and where you're from. I'm genuinely interested. We're going to have that conversation tonight. And, you know, we're going to root the conversation on something relatively serious, which is uh, something I observed even today when I did some interviews, which will be on the show uh, in a couple of weeks. We're compiling a special feature for the Big Daddy Liberty Show as we look at the people who have been impacted by these lockdowns. We'll here on the Big Daddy Liberty Show, we're going to tell the stories behind the people who are impacted by the lockdowns because you're not seeing those in the mainstream media. The mainstream media is far too busy with their operation fear mongering right now about this variant and that variant and you know be careful. You know they put the hoodoo mask on you <laughs> uh, and they play that game of uh, you know frightening people indeed and um you know the other game they play of course is selling you their favorite politicians you know Cyril Ramaphosa they'll say oh he's so great they'll say you know he's he's so fantastic but the one thing we're not hearing about is how 
what has rather the impact on a real personal basis been on the average South African, the faith, flag, family, and freedom type South African? How are you dealing right now with this entire lockdown? Are you someone who has lost a home perhaps, or you're losing your business, or you know, you're barely putting food on the table? Maybe you're someone who, since the beginning of the lockdown, you have had no employment at all. Um, how is that affected and how is this affecting the mental health of fellow South Africans? Are we seeing a rise in the depression numbers, the suicides, for example? Why is that part of the story of a lockdown sort of hushed into the corner as being an inconvenient truth? So we're going to have that conversation tonight. Um, with you. Maybe you can share a personal story um, of how this has impacted you, how a lockdown has placed you in a, um, you know, a, a, a darker mental space. Um, maybe it's someone in your family. We'll have that conversation tonight. So bear with me, people. As I said, we're, we are flying this as we build it. So I'm going to put the link up if you want to join the show. Here is the link. Um, and we'll put that over now for my wonderful, wonderful folks who are watching. All right, it's out. So keep an eye on it, guys. It will be in the descriptor here. Um, I'm anticipating a reasonable number of trolls, perhaps, who will take advantage of this. This is why I want you on camera, because um, <laughs> if you're going to troll, bang, bang, I'm going to make you famous on here. You can best believe that. Um, because this is not an evening for that. This is, you're not going to get me hyped and, you know, my usual giggly and, um, you know, uh, jokey self. You know, this is a rather serious conversation that affects fellow South Africans, um, people who are the family type South Africans. I've always argued that South Africans can be defined and described in three broad sense, uh, or three broad descriptors, excuse me. One, we are a God-fearing nation. We are a God-fearing nation. Well over 97% of this country is a Christian, uh, of some Christian denomination, um, a sizable Muslim population, especially down here in the Western Cape. And of course, um, a very close-knit uh, Jewish community. Um, you know, here in Cape Town, there's a community, Johannesburg, which is where I'm more comfortable in. And of course, you know, a Hindi commu uh, community, um, you know, having grown up in Durban, KZN, you know, shout out to my Hindi folk out there. Um, hey man, them Diwali snacks, uh, you know, I, I, know, I, don't, I know them snacks really well. But um, we are definitely a faith country, as I said, a, a God-fearing country. The second attribute, of course, is, you know, we're a family society. I talk a lot about, you know, the individual this and the individual that because I'm a, I'm a classical liberal, I'm a libertarian. Um, but in truth, we're a, we're a family society, and you'll tend to find that individuals in South Africa, whether they're rich or poor, black, white, Indian, it's irrelevant, but the individual in this country will do anything and everything for the benefits of family. We are a family society. And the last attribute, of course, by and large, is, you know, we are a, um, a law-abiding society, by and large. The overwhelming majority of South Africans are actually law-abiding citizens. You know, our crime, yes, is super high, it's super violent, but you'll find that it's a very small subset of, a, of society, pardon me, of a criminal element that is holding the rest, the rest of us um, to ransom. So, um, yeah, th those three things really are something that resonates with me in terms of what I do, why I do it, um, and who I do it for. It's that God-fearing, law-abiding, and family-orientated South African, that faith flag family and freedom type South African. I'm going to keep repeating this mantra until you guys uh, internalize it, until you begin to see fellow South Africans in that light and not in the way in which politicians want us to see each other as different skin colors and different genders. And, you know, we've got to be suspicious of those whites or we've got to be careful of those blacks or um, those Indians are shifty or those coloreds are drug addicts or they're overly concentrated in the Western Cape. These are the sort of things that politicians in this country have said about us using race and gender as a divider of society. And enough is enough in that front. It is the ordinary South African, that faith flag, family and freedom type South African who is suffering right now under this lockdown. And I put it to you that there are massive implications 
uh, for the mental health of South Africans. And before I even begin that, I can see guys in the waiting uh, lobby. Guys, welcome to it. Uh, just give me a second. I just want to give a quick definition, you know, um, of depression. And this is where this is com uh, this this is where this conversation is coming from. As I mentioned, I'm I'm currently filming for what will be a special series, another special series we're doing. Uh, on the show, which looks at the impact on ordinary people of this lockdown, whether it's level four, uh, level one, level two, it's irrelevant. The actual lockdown itself, which is a, um, well, I won't get into that, but the, the effects of the lockdown. And today I met a group of young, very young, hey, you know that ish, you know, you know when you can see youth in someone, <laughs> that energy, that face, everything, a, a mixture of about four young musicians and people who work in the music space and they were telling me on camera of course as i was interviewing them the stories of just how difficult the past year the nearly i think it's already 500 days of lockdown has been for them can you imagine uh looking into the faces of these five four excuse me young people that should be brimming with hope brimming with a sense of the future brimming with the excitement of the opportunities and the talents they have, the God-given talents, by the way, that they have, those people who should be the, the embodiment of, of a healthy society are depressed, morose, in a very dark place right now, simply because they're not getting the opportunities that a free society should have. And that underpins, of course, the fact that we're not a free society right now. We're under the control of a political elite who are greedy, corrupt, incompetent, and inept an evil political elite who are destroying the youth of this country. And it was those four young musicians and people in the music industry who I interviewed, and I could see the depression in even one of the girls, uh, or the one girl who I was talking to. Um, and she, she said it herself, I didn't have to see it, but she said it herself, that it's not a nice feeling. The sense of losing all hope, which is one quote I got from today. And it got me in a bit of a depressed state. Because I've told you before, I look around me and I see just how dark things are for fellow South Africans. Things are very tough. Things are very tough. And there are South Africans suffering in silence right now. And I must say this, that silence is fantastic to the mainstream media. It's fantastic to the politicians. Because politicians, much like a bomber in a plane, never see their victims at all. And it's that that we're going to have a conversation of because the victims who I refer to, the victims of lockdown, are some of the sort of people who are now suffering from the depression, you know, the mental stresses that come with a lockdown, not being able to provide for loved ones, not being able to look after yourself, to stand on your own feet. So that's the conversation we're going to have tonight. Welcome to it if you're just watching. Sorry for that long intro. I just had to set the scene out properly. Just pardon me, guys. As, as I said, I do see you in the lobby. Steve, I see you. And Bierbok, Grenantele, also known as Praat of Gesels, over the topic van vanavond. Um, so uh, stay with me, guys, as uh, I just quickly sort my ducks out in a row here. And I did say I was going to look at that, just a beginning definition of, of, um, of depression that I just found online. You know, depression is defined as a mental uh, condition characterized by feelings of se severe despondency and dejection, typically also with feelings of inadequacy and guilt, um, often accompanied by a lack of energy and a disturbance of one's appetite and even sleep. So one can tell that a mental illness can have a psychosomatic effect on you. In other words, it can affect the physical very being of you. It's not something to be taken lightly. And there are organizations, and I'll give information about them at the end, because they're the ones who I, I drew on for a lot of the research for tonight's show. Uh, shout out to the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, in particular, uh, SADAG, who produce a lot of these stats. And, you know, for example, on the issue of suicide, the latest data that they have, which unfortunately would account for even the lockdown period, has shown that up to 23 suicides happen in South Africa on a daily basis, according to the organization SADC. Um, let's see here, if, I, if, if there's a choice, a choice quote that I can pull out of this particular um, 
uh, quote, and th this is what really uh, frightened me in particular. You know, the organization highlighted that 79% of these suicides occurred in low and middle income countries, much like South Africa, with suicide being the third leading cause of death in teenagers in particular between the ages of 15 and 19. You therefore cannot tell me that something like a lockdown has no effect on people who are in that state of mind already. So um, welcome to it if you're watching the show. You can see where the show is going. It's not gonna be the usual happy clappy jipper type stuff. Um, and with that being said, I see some guys on the waiting list. Let me begin with you, Steve. Um, I'm gonna bring you on camera. Steve, good evening. Hi. Welcome to the Big Daddy Lucas Show. Thank you. Thanks uh, for the wonderful show. I must say it's a wonderful show. I watch you almost every time you come online, and uh, thanks, thanks for highlighting everything. I just um, I, I work with young kids, and I think a lot of the issues with um, young kids these days they don't get the time to play anymore. I, I'm lucky enough to work every day, and um, the stresses are are getting to me even. Just mm -hmm. um, I'm at home. Now, 24/7, every uh, for more than a day. I haven't seen my office for uh, I'm probably one percent of all the time I've been um, working. So uh, stress is coming in a lot, lot of ways, and uh, yeah, it, I think everybody is suffering, and um, it's just piling up, and, and unnecessary lockdowns and unnecessary rules is just killing us all. Absolutely, and, and again, you know, I we we, we it's so easy for so many of the elites and those who who get the biggest who get to be the biggest voice in the room so if i can put it that way it's so easy for them to dismiss um something like that you know the idea for example that steve going to the office for you i'm assuming was something that also contributed to you socially you know you probably had mates at the office people who you saw you cared about um that not only you worked with but you socialized with um steve i want to ask you a, a slight personal question bear with me yeah. um but are, are you do, do you have a family or are you a father yeah a no, father father of two and and married as well so um yeah, yeah i mean everybody's um locked up each other and it's now every second day school but school is closed mm -hmm. now so it's much more pressure as 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 parents even mm -hmm. just um with kids more all around and not not getting the education they need at the mm -hmm. moment and and seeing my daughter getting behind and my son getting behind because they're not getting the education they they need and i, I must say you know that that really breaks my heart because i often think to myself you know what is the south african parent going through right now when you watch your kid effectively being pulled out of what is such an important element of being a child, which is socializing, building friends, understanding, for example, the differences, the diversity of who we are as South Africans. And some of the best places in which something like that can happen is, of course, is in the school. And you now have a situation where kids are sitting in front of screens, engaging a teacher via a laptop, and somehow we're being told that that's normal. Uh, Steve, you and if you're lucky enough that? to have one, <laughs> and if you're lucky enough to have the That's screen right. and the laptop and uh, the the cold uh, the divide and IT and everything. So um, my kids are maybe lucky, but yeah, this we, we, not all, everybody's getting that. Absolutely, Steve. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, you very are much. The first uh, a fan, if I can call you that with all due respect, who has joined us on the show. I super appreciate it, brother. God bless you. Keep well. Thanks. Thanks. Have a nice one. That is Steve, of course. Uh, who has just joined us. Wurbok has just disappeared off screen, perhaps getting a lack of dope of its um to eat, so as a built on of its. Um, I'll give him a moment to join us a bit later. There he is, coming back on the screen. Wurbok, um, are you ready? Can I put you on the screen? <laughs> yes, Burbok, you may. Hey, man, how are you doing? And where are you from? I'm from Hrubestal, Limpopo. Hrubestal. Uh, in Lumpur, okay. yes. uh, for, for the life of me, I thought Krubles doll in the Northern Cape. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, welcome, man. It's good to have you on the show. Wow, all the way in Lumpur. Um, you know, I, I, we're having a conversation about the, the depression, um, the or rather the mental health of South Africans as this lockdown grinds on. Um, and I think it's worth asking you just the question, to, maybe to kick this conversation off. Dude, how has this lockdown impacted on you? What do you do? Uh, we've got a restaurant in Kazirin, and uh, it's a very fine dining restaurant. So now, because 
we can only do takeaways and deliveries. You're not going to really do fine dining That's right. as a takeaway or delivery and stuff like that. So we had to completely close down our shop. Oh, no. And, I mean, as the things are progressing, I believe it's going to be more than two weeks. I've heard rumors about going to level five, and, like, yeah, it's pretty bad. Talk to me. Let's personalize it, because, you know, someone listening to this might just think, oh, well, you know, you're, you're business owners anyway. You, you can take the hit. You know, there's, there's those people who are very flippant about these issues, but that's just simply just not the truth, right? There are people behind this restaurant. There, there are people who are deriving an income from this restaurant. You know, how, how have they been coping? How have you been coping in your family? Well, um, in this restaurant, there's quite a few people involved and stuff like that. My aunt's working at the restaurant. My dad's got the restaurant. <laughs> Um, uh, there's so many people that work for us in the restaurant that's waiters and they only most of the money they, they get from tips their basic salary is next to nothing but they make a good money off tips so yeah. it's not just us it's the, the staff as well that's filling the now. And besides that, we had last year, we had the six-month lockdown, and they were feeling it as well. Absolutely. And again, it, it's, it's funny you mentioned the hospitality industry in particular, because, you know, as I mentioned, you know, just before, um, we're, we're shooting a special feature for the show. Um, and we're focusing, the, the first episode of it will focus on the hospitality industry, you know, whether it's restaurants, uh, B&Bs, wine tour operators, because I'm here in the Cape. Um, and I'll even show you some shark dive, shark cage diving guys who have just said, look, it's it's been absolutely devastating for us as an industry. And it's just coming back or even trying to trade, as you said, is, is nearly impossible. But the politicians just don't understand this. Um, Burbank, as a final question, perhaps just to keep it going, um, you know, where to from here? What, what, what's the what's the plan? Are you guys uh, is the, is there a plan at the moment? Like, is what, what what are things looking like? To make arrangements to get the people paid. Oh well, at the moment, the arrangement is to get the staff paid. Yeah. I mean, like our staff is pretty well trained, and you don't want them to go for two weeks without pay and then they work at some other place yeah. so like the staff is pretty important to us like, absolutely we want to keep them happy we want to keep them there they're well trained and like to train some of them from new is just such a hassle it's not mm. that easy and it's a hassle that the politicians don't understand. Trust me on that. Burbok, that's you from Limpopo. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to come to Stuart in Randburg. I do see you, Kolohont. Hey, Kolohont. Uh, it's a familiar name that I often see in the comment section. I will come to you just now, brother. Um, guys, welcome to it. You're watching the Big Daddy Liberty Show. Apologies if the show isn't as smooth as usual. I've opened up the lines to you. Um, the viewer of the show. I will put that link up in the uh, comment section again if you're keen on joining us. What are we talking about tonight? You know, it's, it's a bit of a more of a personal show. You know, how has this lockdown um, impacted you in terms of your mental health? Are you someone who now finds themselves being more anxious? Are you going through an anxiety? Are you um, maybe experiencing bouts of depression, perhaps? Um, and, I, you know, with, I hate to say it, but, but it's, a, it's a reality, as we saw in the stats with there being as, as many as 23 suicides a day but are you perhaps even someone who has suicidal thoughts and um i will give the details of the organization sadak that's a south african depression and anxiety group after this because it's a total myth to say that this lockdown is simply just an economic issue 
but doesn't have an impact on us psychologically. It's an absolute myth that people push, uh, push uh, in order to absolve the politicians of the true impact of their lockdowns. Guys, I'll try my little best to get the comments up on screen too, but relax, welcome to it. We're having that conversation tonight. And as you guys trickle in, we will um, we'll have that particular conversation. Let me go to Stuart W in Randburg. Stuart, good evening. Welcome to the Big Daddy Liberty Show. Uh, Stuart, you, you're muted, just unmute yourself. Right, sure. We can't hear you, so I'm going to put you on standby for now. Just maybe try and figure out um, what's happening at the moment uh, because we cannot hear you. You are muted. Uh, with that being said, let me go to Kola Hunt. Uh, um, Kola Hunt, good Hi. evening. Welcome. Where are you actually from? Where are you, where uh, are you actually I'm, in, from? I'm in Pretoria. Mm. So, yeah. The capital city. Good evening. Welcome to the show. But I mean, mm. as you heard, you know, mm. what we're talking about here tonight. Talk to me about this lockdown. Mm. Has it impacted on you, um, on your mental health, yeah. perhaps, or just maybe even your own family? What's what's the world of Kola Hunt <laughs> looking like? <laughs> yeah, so the thing is, uh, my, luckily for me, I can work from home. So I sit here in front of the computer all day, and then, yeah, basically, uh, I, I stay alone at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so the thing is, I've got basically zero social interaction with mm -hmm. people. And uh, it's uh, after a while, it really starts to take its toll. Um, yeah, the thing is, um, uh, because for someone like me, I, I've been uh, the, uh, dealing with anxiety and depression, mm. like uh, mm. since before the uh, all of this started. So, mm. I mean, yeah, it's, and it's quite bad. I, I want to come in here because I think you, you're perhaps the the perfect person to speak to in so far as you know, this is something you deal with on a day to day basis, and it's something you have been dealing with even before the lockdown. And there might be mm. someone who's listening tonight who. Um, maybe for them, these are feelings that are now coming um, upon them because of the lockdown, right? Or the lockdown being one yeah. major reason for that. Talk to me about your coping mechanisms. You know, what have you you done? Because I can hear, with all due respect, and, and you know, pardon me if I, yeah. if I sound like I'm being too personal, but I can hear yeah. in your voice that, you know, this is something that really affects you on a day-to-day -day basis. And yeah. it's, it's stories like yours that don't make it into the mainstream. You know, people suffer in silence, as I said at the beginning of yeah. this, but what have been your coping mechanisms? Well, uh, let's see. So the thing is, I try, I try to um, see my fiance on weekends, uh, but yeah, the last two weekends it hasn't been possible. Mm. Um, but then a, a, a lot of um, Basically, I, I've joined sort of a YouTube community um, mm. of guys who stream. So mostly guys in the US and some in Australia and so on. Um, yeah, the, the thing is we, we, we do some adult theme topics with mm. uh, just the, the uh, dirty jokes with puppets. So, mm. um, yeah. <laughs> no, so, I do hear you, man. And you know, the funny yeah, thing is, um, I, I, you raise an important point. Um, because as I said, I have seen you in the comment section quite often on the yeah. show. And thank you so much for being someone who watches, shares, and likes the show. Um, because it does become a bit of a community, doesn't it? You know, uh, you know yeah. the fact that I even recognized your... Your, 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 your tag, you know, Kola Hunt, yeah. and there's, there's so many others, you know, there's, there's Moon Child, shout out to you, Moon Child. Um, and I saw in the comments of your loss, and my condolences to you, Moon Child. Um, you know, there's so many other people who are just so familiar. Um, and it's kind of weird, right? You know, you, 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 you know yeah. these people, but you don't know them. But in an age like ours, where we're, we're prevented from seeing each other and having that human contact, this kind of thing actually does become quite important. Yeah, no, it does. Um, 
the things and you actually you can actually manage to build some very good friendships with mm. people that you've never met in real life. I mean, uh, uh, there's this guy, uh, he goes by Snow Dog. Um, yeah, the, the thing is, I, I know quite a lot about his personal life and stuff, and I can consider him a good friend of mine. Oh. Mm. And the, the thing is, he's, a, he's like 10 years my senior, so it's, mm. uh, okay. uh, yeah, uh, c quite interesting. Um, but yeah, no, the thing is... Well, I'll definitely yeah. say this. Brother, thank you so much. You're definitely a part of the Big Daddy Liberty family. I really appreciate you, brother. Thank you for coming through, <laughs> making the effort, homie. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, no and problem. again, man, God bless you yeah. all the best. Um, you're the sort of South African who I always talk about, um, who I, I do what mm. I do for, you know, ordinary people who, you know, may not be out there, who, you know, who, who aren't the loudest voice in the room, unfortunately, but you're the kind yeah. of person who I actually really want to stump for, to stand for, and to get the voice of out there. And this topic for me yeah. is one which I think it's new, right? I, 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 I I, I'm new, I suppose, to, yeah. to thinking and, and, and dealing with my own, um, you know, uh, um, I don't know what word to use, but my, my own personal mental health. And it's something that I've realized yeah. as of late I need to pay attention to. And it's because of this lockdown. It's because of the hardship, um, more so that I see of yeah. other people, that's getting me into a dark space. So, uh, you know, it, it sounds counterintuitive yeah. to say it, but... Guys like you, I learn from, I listen to with, with great um, care. And I go, okay, you know, and I, that's why I asked you that particular question. You know, what sort of coping mechanisms are you yeah. using? Because I, I can tell you now, there are people who are listening and they're going, okay, maybe I should try that. Maybe I should build an online network, an online community of people who can just check in every now and then and say, hey, man, what's going on? Um, even yeah. if it's just a, a WhatsApp message or whatever the case may be. Final word uh, before I move on. Um. Yeah, uh, if anyone wants to join us in the YouTube community, um, it's called the Cotton Connection. So, yeah. And, uh, well, the, 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 uh, there was one thing. Uh, I actually, uh, uh, you're, uh, you're kind of only noticing now. Yeah. I, uh, I was saying last year in May that there's no way they would ever release the April suicide statistics uh, right. but because of the level five lockdown right right so yeah and and, and it's something funny enough and i'm going to let you know go uh Paula, thank you so much for being on cool. the show and i mean it's funny enough it's something that i actually thought of when i was doing the research behind this i was like you know will we see a situation where there is an even greater attempt or an actual attempt let me put it that way an actual attempt to conceal the numbers or to obscure the numbers because I can tell you now, any any person who comes uh, onto any platform, whether it's here or the mainstream, and suggests, for example, that there is no impact on people's mental health when these lockdowns just persist, um, is absolutely, that is a, it's not only a fib, it's just an outright lie. Um, Nora Durbanacher, I see your comment uh, for me to put the link out. I will do exactly that. Just uh, bear with me, please. Um, uh, if you're just watching, we're going to keep it going. Um, perhaps we'll make it a 45-minute show, maybe an hour long, depending on just the interest. But um, w w tonight's about you. I'm talking to you tonight. Um, there's no fancy guests. <laughs> there's no libertine friends. It's just you, the people who make the show what it actually is. Um, and w what is at the heart of why I'm doing tonight's show is my concern for the mental health of fellow South Africans. And I thought, hey, let me talk to who else but my fans, the people who watch the show. And even if you're a detractor, even if you don't like the show and you watch anyway, because I've tend to find that, you know, some of my detractors are the most ardent watchers of the show, <laughs> uh, including be, being able to, to, to say, what you said at, th at minute 30 on episode so-and-so. I was like, yo, you even know that? You're cataloging my show? Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, but the point being, you know, even if you're a detractor, just remove that hat for a moment um, and just come on, you know, talk to me. Like, because whether you hate me or, or like me, I know you're some, you're a, you're a human being like me. And I know. <laughs> Sorry. 
Sorry. And I know how tough it is for South Africans right now. So that it doesn't matter to me whether you, you like me or you hate me or whatever. You're a fellow South African. You're a fellow human being, damn it. And what is being done to you by the politicians in this country, as I said earlier on, and I did warn you at the beginning of the stream that you know I might, I might be hiding it behind a presenter's face, but I'm incredibly angry. I'm incredibly angry to see what's being done to South Africans. And it's an anger that registers on a deeply emotional level. Um, you know, we, we, we take for granted our mental health as South Africans because we, we're the phosphate nation, right? We, we've, we've, we've grown to develop a very hard exterior as South Africans, as we are assaulted daily by the elites in this country, particularly the political elites. We've developed this, this hard exterior, but behind it, we're real people, you know? We're people who care about our families. We're people who actually deeply care about each other. But we, we live under a, a, a state, a statist tyranny that is so hell-bent on building a country on hate, on, on violence, on, on subjugation of people based on arbitrary things from race to gender. And, you know, I, I put a brave face on, especially when I go out into poorer communities in this country. All right, all right. I'm gonna take a, 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 a momentary pause as I just compose myself. And funny enough, I think I just froze. <laughs> um, all right, here we go. Oh man, Wi-Fi don't fail me now. <laughs> um, hold on guys, I think I've, I've frozen here. Just give me a moment. All right, I think I'm back, or well, maybe I'm not. Um, oh man, this is one of those moments, guys, where I, I have to apologize. Um, you know, I, I can't do much about the particular Wi Fi I'm working off of now. All right, I'm going to keep an eye on the comment section. Just let me know, guys, if I'm on screen or if I have frozen. Um, let's see if I should just switch systems. Oh, yeah, yeah. <sighs> okay, Ron says you look fine on this side. Uh, okay, thanks, man. I'm on screen. Sorry, just my screen has suddenly frozen down here, which is my, it's where I control the guest panel and all that. My, my apologies for that long delay, therefore. Probably looked weird. <laughs> um, I'll just ignore my screen and I'll focus on this one. Um, you know, I, I, the point I was making early on is, is you know, we, we've conditioned ourselves because of the, the environment we live in, because of the nature of the government we live under, to be a phosphate nation, you know, to, to literally sort of, uh, as we say in Zulu. Um, why? Because the environment we live under is just so tough, um, you know. But the truth of the matter is that that, that shouldn't be what a, a prosperous, non-racial, free, and property-owning society should have to go through. Um, uh, okay, Graham says, sound is good, but the video is frozen. All right, guys, now I'm frozen, apparently. Uh, maybe I just jinxed it. Uh, <laughs> all right, let me turn the Wi-Fi on and give it a moment. Um, but you can still hear me, so I'm gonna keep it going. I do have Megan on the line. I'm going to give, Megan, just bear with me. Um, there's obviously just a, a bit of an issue with the, 
the internet, uh, but everybody can hear me. So let's just get our voices out there. Megan, you are on screen now. Um, let me just get some sound from you. Can you hear me, Megan? Welcome to the BDL show. Hi, how are you? Well, thank God I'm uh, I'm okay. But the, the, the topic tonight maybe got to me a, a little bit um, just a, a moment ago because, you know, you're seeing the faces of ordinary South Africans stream in on tonight's show. Mm. And, you know, even as I hang up the, the call, I'll call it the call, just for um, old school like that, um, you know, the you, the thoughts just remain with that particular person of, you know, if, if this is one mm. South African who's going through this, how many more are in a situation where things are just bleak and dark at the mm. moment? Um, but talk to me, Megan, this lockdown, its impact on you as an individual, on your family, what have you gone through? Well, yes, our family has a bit of, yeah, in every, I think in every way, because, you know, I'm designing, I, yeah, I'm in the design industry, so I work for various clients in various in industries, so I'm experiencing their side of everything and then my dad is a doctor as well and also get to hear what's like going on at the hospitals and with patients and that and you know it's crazy because you know each one has got their own thing and you're also experiencing like your own hardship um mm. and it's like you don't know how to go further because you know like our care worker the, um that looks after my father-in-law I mean, she, she stays in Yesterist and when you take her home when she needs to go home and you like go and drop her off and there's like no people wearing masks there and it's like you know are we going to go through another lockdown now again because of stuff like this and you get frustrated um mm. so there's a lot of frustration I think coming from all sides of and in various industries and not only people suffering but also, they, it's just this unknown. Hmm. And then you've got Megan, a lot of do, people. Do you on... have kids? No, no. Okay, okay. Um, but I mean, I, I've, 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 I've been in a, a weird situation where, you know, today, for example, where, where, where this show actually, I got my idea for the show was, was this gang, you know, uh, that I met mm -hmm. today. I call them gang, mm -hmm. not in a sense of <laughs> Cape gang, you know, violent gang, yeah. but just, you know, a, a group, if you will of young musicians and you can see that these are the sort of people who should be brimming with hope you know brimming with the excitement of a, yeah. a, a, a better future but they're just they're not mm -hmm. and the one uh, uh girl who i spoke to who was in the group just literally said i i just don't know what to do now i feel like mm -hmm. i can't plan my life i can't try mm -hmm. and, and put together piece together the, a sequence of things that must happen that will bring me joy um yeah because the nature of lockdown is your plan and then some mm -hmm. politician comes up with an arbitrary rule and that's it and that's what is affecting her emotionally talk to me about your your particular journey like has this registered to you on an emotional level has it affected you on a, in terms of your mental health perhaps you know it has affected mental health because you can't really you know i'm used to being in in the industry that I am, seeing clients on a, well, was seeing clients on a daily basis and, you know, being able to see friends and family where now, you know, <laughs> you're stuck at home and there's not much, and there's not much you can do about it. And, you know, it's the uncertainty that gets to me, um, you know, of like, you know, what's going to happen is like, if you do get sick, are you going to make it through it? Um, and if you don't get sick, you know, who are you going to lose? Who, or if, if anybody else gets sick, I mean, who are you going to lose? Or who's going to make mm. it through it? And mm. work-wise, it's like, you know, how much longer can clients afford? Uh, the, well, the ones that have closed down or, or sort of half closed, like the restaurants that are only doing takeaways. I mean, how much longer can people, some, similar people be in the same industries or mm. in the same situation? carry on paying you for the services it's like is it time to start looking at other revenues of income or to you know go and study something else to do other things that you can still make money on mm. and I, i'm going to leave you at, at that particular point but you made you made a key mm. um 
observation, which is the 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 family unit, mm -hmm. and it's the, the the impact of telling people they're unable and they should not, or that, firstly telling them they cannot, because they remember that was part of the rules initially that we cannot see family, mm -hmm. and then morphed into you should not see family. Something like that has mm -hmm. an impact, especially because family is the one institution that we all care about, the one institution that actually mm -hmm. builds us. Um, uh, Megan, thank you for your time. I'm going to put you mm -hmm. off screen as I go to my final guest for this evening, Dylan Kruger. Um, I see Dylan waiting patiently. Dylan, pardon me. There, there might be a bit of a delay because um, my little console here is uh, a little glitchy, but you are on screen. Yes, you are. Dylan, good evening. Welcome to the Big Daddy Liberty Show. We're talking, of course, um, the impact on the mental health of South Africans of these extended lockdowns. And again, they don't even have to be extended. Lockdowns, period, as a blunt instrument by the state against ordinary people. What's your experience of it being? Are you someone who's seen this register on an emotional or even mental health level now? Well, I suspect that it's, it, it sits in a very similar vein to what you sort of experience. You, you strike me as the empath type. All right, so you speak to quite a few people. The industry that I've worked in, similar to the previous guest, has been in the business to business space. All right, so I work in sales. And a lot of the times these people confess some seriously personal fears when it comes to I'm unsure whether my business is going to exist in the next two, three months. Um, we're used to working in the office. Um, I, I don't think I can keep people on, on board anymore. They, they tend to share a lot of personal stuff, right? So, and you can, they can only really hide their fear for so long and only talk in logical terms for so long until it eventually starts to show on their face, right? Mm -hmm. So even if you're having a video conversation like what you and I are having now, you can see it happening on their face. That's These are right. people that are, that are used to sitting in a, in a corporate sense where they already feel like they're struggling in a South African economy, where they're being hamstrung by red tape and having to jump through certain hoops, and then they're not sure if they're going to be able to survive anyway for the next year. And then adding on top of that, they need to then close their company from functioning in any normal sense. You can see it all over their face, right? And these are people that they need to then go and pay their staff out of their personal pocket. And uh, as someone like you, I, I can see yeah. it striking you personally too. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. You're speaking to people all the time mm. and it's getting, getting to you. So my question is, as a person who's a business owner yourself, mm. how's it been going with you, Sita? Mm. Yeah. Um, thank you for actually putting that question because, um, you know, it, it's two things. Number one, you know, I... I what I do, right, and a lot of people who maybe who are new to the show don't know what I do, right? So they just see the talk show host and, you know, the guy who goes to EFF rallies and, you know, it's all fun and games to a certain extent. But, you know, I, I do what I do as a passion, right? I gave up a relatively comfortable, plush, middle-class existence, you know, working in, 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 in uh, politics, working in, even in government. You know, I used to be... Uh, and I don't hide anything on the show. A lot of people think, oh, you know, he's a secret character. Who is this guy? And I'm like, ah. like, even my Facebook page is open, guys. Like, I hide nothing <laughs> about myself. Um, you know, I used to work in government. And, you know, uh, I used to work um, in under Helen Zilla's administration, right, as a spokesperson for social development. So I've always been known as someone who has a keen interest on social development, on the issue of ordinary people, Um and the point is really this, I gave up a middle class existence in order to go to live on the road on the one hand, to produce a show, right? That's something I've always wanted to do. But more importantly, to do the advocacy work of getting my ideas out there. And I've always said to myself, I've got to go to those spaces where people are often forgotten and easily forgotten. And what this lockdown has done for me, if anything, is showed me how a group of people who are forgotten already, even in a normal society, before the lockdown, have simply fallen into just the absolute back of mind right now. And 
uh, what, what I wanted to actually put to you as you're, as you're speaking, because you're, you're right, is, you know, think of that chap who maybe doesn't have access to the Wi-Fi and internet who can come onto a show like Big Daddy Liberty um, and speak about this issue. Their mental health, too, is at stake here, is definitely on the cards. You know, what about a chap who lives in a shack on a sand dune here in Cape Town, um, who has to come to that miserable environment on a day-to-day -day basis? And life already is miserable for that person, but the lockdown now compounds it, where it creates an even larger subset subset of, so that, of, of his neighbors who maybe before had held a job as a waiter, a waiter or a taxi driver or something like that, which helped lift the community, but now that's being taken away by politicians. That chap doesn't get a chance to come on the show um, because of purely based on the circumstances, but doesn't get a chance to come on the show and share his story. Worse yet, that chap is totally forgotten by the political elites and actually even put out of mind until the next election when a food parcel and a t-shirt is given to them. But what about their mental state of health during the duration of this poor governance period? So. You're right when you say it, it, it registers it on an empath level, of course. It deeply affects me. You know, you, 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 I'm, I know when I walk through a, an informal uh, settlement, weaving through shacks to try and speak to people, I know that, yeah, I, I, you know, for as much as I live on the road and I don't have my creature comforts anymore of, of you know, having a nice job and a, a nice salary every month, um, even though I'm, I'm, I'm now living on the road, I don't live in those circumstances. I'm able to walk away from that. But what about them? They're not able to walk away from that. And politicians don't give a flying fudge about those people. And that's what makes me incredibly angry. That's what drives me to do what I do. And it's something which has forced me to start digging into this part of the, of the question of the discussion, which is the mental health of South Africans. Who cares about the ordinary person, the faith, flag, family, freedom type South African? Who actually takes a moment to say, how are South African families doing? Especially in the more poorer parts of our country. And it's those things that really do get to me. And you know, I often apologize for, for you know, letting things register on an emotional level. But you can see why it affects me, because I've seen what real South Africa looks like. And it's that South Africa which you don't see on mainstream media, or it's always a, a short insert um, of file footage, you'll see them say. Um, but no one takes the moment to speak to those people and say, actually, where are you in terms of your mental health? And does someone actually care enough to help you do something about it? Are you empowered to do something about it? And the answer is often no in that regard. Dylan? Final word, um, maybe on your side, the, the, the effect on you, you know, give me, make it, you know, I'll, I'll put the question upon on back to you. You know, how have you dealt with this? Lots of busy work, right? Um, I think that's probably been one of the things that I've been considering for a lot of the people that came onto the stream now is that the only thing that I could probably offer in terms of advice as something that I've been doing myself is just Try and keep something in your house in some kind of structure, right? If you have a hobby, do some woodwork if that's something that you've been enjoying, right? But on my end, it's been exhausting, right? I'm someone that works in sales much the same way as you. I need to actively sit in the shit with these people and see the fear in their eyes when they're like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to even afford marketing for my company because mm -hmm. I probably won't be able to pay for my rent this mm. month if I do it, right? And you can only really sit in the shit with people so long until eventually you start getting exhausted too. And if I work as a commission only salesperson, if I can't make sales to companies who need the service, I don't get an income either. Mm. So absolutely, that shit freaks everybody out. Mm. My only real advice in that, in that space that helps as some form of coping is clean, <laughs> right? Mm. Go. Take, take Jordan Peterson's often memed advice, go clean up your room as often right. as you can. That's right. Before you try and save the world, what are you doing in your own personal circumstances to build a set of behaviors that affirm you on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, Dylan, thank you very much. I must end this one over here. Guys, unfortunately, um, it, my little console here, which is where I control everything, is just glitching, 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 glitching. Um, Stuart, I do see you um, holding in the background. I'm sorry, I, I will not be able to bring you on screen. It's just, it, it's it's hopelessly, um, 
uh, glitchy right now, but let me give it a shot because I, I like giving things a, a, a an absolute opportunity here because you have been waiting in all fairness um, on here. Stuart, I'm going to try to bring you on screen. Uh, Stuart, good evening. Welcome to the BDL show. Um, I hope your sound issues are, are sorted now. Can you hear us? <laughs> and can we I, hear you? Can you hear me now? Yes. Am I audible? Good, good evening. <laughs> evening to you. Uh, thank you very much for getting me on this show. Um, I've followed you for quite a while. I like your channel you. very much. Thank and I think you're doing, you're doing wonderful work. Um, on this particular issue, well, mental health-wise, I think I'm all right, you know, mm. until the men in white coats come and take me away. <laughs> uh, but, but mean, meanwhile, I'm hanging on. I've got to mm. tell you, I've been in business for myself in a small way, never uh, with 100 employees and such, but... I've, I've done that all my life, really, since uh, the age of about 18. And um, on and off, I have been in the corporate world as an employee at management level and lower at sales and marketing levels and worked my way up successfully to senior management. Mm. That was back in the 90s. I eventually got sick and tired of the corporate world. And there are many reasons for that. I won't get into all that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a bit of a dog-eat-dog -dog scenario there. Um, so I left that again, and for the past uh, 24 years, I have been running my own very small business, a micro-enterprise, which consists of myself, my wife, and occasional freelancers who I contract with to assist with projects that might be beyond my ability or I don't have time to address. So I would say I've got pretty good experience of business. And I've got to tell you that what I see now is my portfolio of clients. And I'm in the IT uh, sector um, doing web design, uh, doing web development, doing search engine optimization, general internet marketing through, through using websites and such. Um, and management of databases for collaborate recording and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, the fact is that of my multiple uh, present clients, perhaps about 50, um, who are very loyal, I've had some of them on my books for 15, 17, 18 years. Um, I've run a survey about oh, a few months ago, and I found them many in desperate straits. Mm. These are businesses which have similar numbers of employees, meaning mm. none, or perhaps 10 or 15 or 20 in some cases. Mm. And they have told me that they don't believe they're going to continue. Um, one, for instance, said, yes, he said, Stuart, he says, we almost had to close. We were forced almost into closure. He's been going also more than 20 years, and he could not continue, but by taking a loan from relatives uh, overseas uh, in pounds, which of course translates to lots of rands, he managed to hang on, hang on. He is still battling, however, so he may go through the cycle again. Mm. Uh, and Should, and this, me, is, this seems here. to be universal. Uh, I was just saying, let, let me quickly interject here, just for the sake of time, um, you know, with all due respect, you know, you're, 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 you're quite a, a um, um, how do I say this respect? Oh, the word is you're old. most seasoned. You're most the seasoned word, gentleman. The, the, word, the word is <laughs> um, old. It's very short. Know, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, uh, you know, tell me about your family. You know, are you, are you a dad, a, a, a grandfather, perhaps? What's the effect been on them? You know, when you, when you chat to them, um, you know, are you seeing, are you seeing them take this on? Are they struggling perhaps at the moment? You know, what, what has been on the effect on you and your personal uh, circumstances and family? The only family element are all in Australia, believe it or not. Right. Uh, they emigrated from England many, many years ago and ended up there. And now they're fully established. They're never going to leave there. Um, as I emigrated to South Africa in 1975. Mm. But the fact is, no, I don't have any immediate family to worry about, which is a, a saving grace on my part, I suppose. Mm. Um, the fact is, if, if I had a family, I don't know what sort of dire straits I would have been in. Absolutely. Because my, turn, my ability to market my services has now been effectively ceased by these lockdowns. 
And of course, when the lockdown started, interestingly, I looked at this and I studied up and I thought, what is this all about? Exactly what's going to happen? Once I learned that, I realized, well, okay. I mean, we all thought it was for 21 days, but forget that now. Mm -hmm. um, the reality we know. Um, so I thought, well, hang on. I found that IT, in all its uh, uh, differences, is an essential service, mm -hmm. which is not impacted by the lockdowns, I thought. How foolish of me. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I wasn't impacted. I actually work from home. So I don't have to go dashing around the countryside. I can communicate effectively via the means such as we're using now. Mm -hmm. um, the fact is that what I discovered very quickly was, no, 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 it's not me I have to worry about, it's my clients who provide my living. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that was, that was the problem that has led to the fact that I no longer can market at all because I cannot find new clients in this climate of fear and uncertainty. I understand what's happening. Mm. Business people in a small way, not the corporates, the huge corporates. No, no, they've got assets like you can't believe. They can leverage those assets to keep them going into loans or whatever they want. We cannot in small business. We simply cannot. The reality is that those folks cannot dare spend money that is not absolutely essential for their future survival. And they are showing it. And it must be said, and, and, and I must, I must uh, just for the sake of time, I must end our conversation, but it must be said just on that particular point, that, that must create an anxiety, right? You know, as you mentioned, big corporates, oh, yeah. you know, have this, in, in most cases, they sit on actual cash reserves because they haven't, yeah. for years, they've been tentative about investing yeah. in South Africa given the policy environment anyway, yeah. and lockdown has just made that worse. So they can, they're sitting on cash reserves that allow them to keep this going. Um, but for a small business owner, that's just not the case. They no, don't have no. that luxury. Um, well, should, yeah. I, I, must, I must end our conversation, unfortunately, here, because I'm just keeping an eye on time. That's, of course, Stuart out in Randburg. Stuart, thank you so much, by the way. Um, oh, I'm going to have to do this on it's screen now because my uh, software has totally glitched to the point where I can't even control things from my panel down here again. And with that maybe being said, Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm sorry for the slightly more slower paced show, but I will once a month at least mix these types of shows in where I bring you, the viewer, on to this platform. The topics might range from more exciting stuff, <laughs> but this is just something that was on my mind tonight, and I wanted to bring you into the conversation um, and to hear from you guys who ordinarily you just comment, you know, right on the screen. But there's real people behind that. You are real people behind that. So thank you so much for participating on the show. I'm sorry for the glitchiness. I will fetch my usual router, um, or router, sorry, from Joburg. Uh, I left it in Joburg, and I'm, I'm paying the price for it, unfortunately, in the Wi-Fi. Um, as I say, thank you so much for watching. Shout out to you, Gabi, uh, for watching. That's my, my Rav out in uh, Johannesburg. Um, if anything, a spiritual source that I tap into to ground myself. Um, and uh, thank you, Dylan Kruger, for having watched um, and for your input on the show. Rebellious Ruth, I think I saw you on the waiting list earlier on, uh, but you, you came off. Uh, apologies for that. Um, but you will be someone who, firstly, I see you're not in the comments, so shout out to you for being a fan. Um, and I'll definitely have you on in future. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I super appreciate it. With that being said, uh, I will see you on Sunday evening at 8 p.m. for Liberty and Friends. A new panel will be on that one, an exciting one, as we wrap up what will be this news week on this Sunday's show. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the format. <clears throat> The topics will be a lot more uh, lively, I promise. Uh, this was a bit of a dark one, but uh, a necessary one. Because, again, I do the show for faith, the people of faith flag, and who love the flag, um, who do things for family, and, of course, who yearn for freedom. Those are my values. Those are the people who I do what I do for. So thank you for watching, guys. Please hit that like button on the way out. And, of course, share the stream, if you, especially if you thought it was interesting. For those of you who support the show, um, especially with financial contributions, I really do appreciate it. It does help get me around 
um, especially as we have a very busy week of filming next week for the show. Whoa, look forward to the BDL show for two weeks from now. A very interesting show as I dig deeper on this topic of the effects of this lockdown, especially on the hospitality and the tourism industry. Lots of people who are waiting to chat to me to share their story of how politicians have destroyed their quality of life and their livelihoods. And those stories must be told. The politicians must be confronted uh, by this and shouldn't be, as I said at the beginning, like bombings, not seeing their victims who they literally destroy the lives of. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me see if I can do this from down here. Um, a reminder to you as I always do at the end of every show for you to never trust a con. Mm -hmm.